Hello, my name's Belinda and this is my channel. Welcome if you're a first time visitor here. If you're a one of my subscribers already, welcome back. I've been wanting to have another play with my jelly plate for probably a week and a half and haven't had the opportunity. So today I thought, right, I'm going to make time to do this. And I've been thinking about it in that time. I've been thinking about what I could do, how I could add some value to you guys watching because um, I really appreciate your support but I want to be able to show you something new or interesting uh, so that hopefully we can both learn through the process so I have watched a few YouTube videos on jelly printing um, since my last little play uh, a video on that is in my channel if you'd like to watch that if you haven't already and I was thinking, okay, there's lots of ideas on textures or stamps, how to make prints with your jelly print. So what can I do that's different? So I don't know if these are different, but I certainly haven't come across them. But there are so many videos out there and I haven't, certainly haven't watched all of them. Probably less than 1% that I've actually watched. So if it's already out there, which it very well could be, um... I hope you're not bored, um, but hopefully there is something new in what I'm going to do today. So I've got all my stuff set up. I've got a pile of pages that I've already printed, um, which I thought I might add some more stuff to. And there's some ones I haven't done in there as well. I've got a supply of blank paper. I've got my book that I'm using at the moment to roll off my brayer and the tools that I use. So I'll just keep going with that and hey let's just get into it and I'll talk about what I'm doing as I go along. So I'm just going to lay some paint down. Oh if I can get the lid off this jar. My friend got some paint and she gave me some in this jar and <laughs> first, there we go, first time I want to use it and I struggled to get the lid off. So this is paint she picked up really cheap um, that had been mismixed at the shop. Hadn't been mixed to the right colour that the person actually wanted. So I must, next time I'm able to visit the shop, look out for any like that. Oops, that's quite a lot of blue. It's quite thin too. A lot thinner than some of the other house paints I've got. Right. Sorry, I just need to take a moment to wipe that with the baby wipe, otherwise it's going to dry. And then I'll have a big mess. Okay, it only takes a moment. Right, I think I will just go with blue. I very rarely do a single colour print, um, just because I like mixing it up. But since I got ended up with quite a lot of paint, I'm just going to go with this. And I was just going to do a straight print start off, but since I've got all this to work with, I'm thinking I'll get straight into making some patterns. Right, I think that's pretty good. Right, so first thing, um, I'm not sure at all if this is going to work, this idea. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. You'll see what I mean. Um, I had this sprayer I bought online from China and it arrived damaged. Um, I don't know if you can see in, in there, it's all crinkled. So when it rolls, it doesn't roll straight. Um, and I had this idea for creating some texture with some, some wiggly lines. I was going to do it with hot glue, but I was out of hot glue. Um, so I just glued some string and it's not stuck all that well and it's really fibrous it's actually twine not string um, and when rolls all right on paper but not so well on a table so I don't know if it'll actually roll so here goes nothing it'll either work or it won't um, but could do the same idea with a um, inside from a toilet roll or something like that just glue some string or hot glue and do that but here goes is it gonna work Oh, yes, it's kind of working. 
Yeah, look at that. Woo. I'm actually quite happy. I'm quite impressed. Oops, it's getting a bit mucky now. Oh, I like that. I just rolled it off on this book page. Yeah, look at that fun texture. I like that. Let's see if I can just grab this. Oops. Mm. Doesn't go so well when it slides in the paint. Hmm. Yeah, might be a one-hit wonder. <laughs> but hey, let's do a print of that anyway. I'll just find a page to do it on. Maybe on this page. So I've got this page. It's okay, but let's see what we get from that so yeah my brat that brat I think I'm gonna have to chuck it it's not working fantastically worked okay a couple of passes across and then it just started sliding in the paint so that's not so helpful so we might have to rework that idea a little bit oh I do like that though I do read oh first First time, and I, yeah, I love that. That's so cool. Might, might be tempted to leave that one as it is, I think. Right, please excuse my arms in the frame as I reach for my paint, but I'm, I can't really do anything else. Um, it is what it is. So, right, I'm going to go in with some more paint now. And I'll do a couple of colours, I think, this time. some yellow and a splash color. I'm using a mix of paints today from house paints um, to folk art paints to just regular student acrylic paints. So no preference really. I just use what I've got. Oops, that's a little bit of gunk. Just wipe that off I think. A little bit of the liquid where it's separated from the paint because these are these tubes of paint are really old and some of them are really gunky. Right. Oops, I've still got paint on my brayer. Don't know how I managed that. Right, doesn't matter anyway if we get some blue in with this. It'll be all good. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. It's looking um like the marbling that you can do how you can pull the colors to create patterns that's what that reminded me of but I've kind of muddied it now so it's lost that effect now for some reason there's areas of the plate that won't take the paint and I'm wondering if that's the clear stuff out of the paint it's created some sort of um, resistant surface little bit of extra work on those areas and it's, it's coming all right. Right, call that a day. Right, okay, the next texture is this little one here. Um, I don't know if you know the Kids Mosaic artwork kits that you can buy and they come with um, adhesive shapes to stick on the cardboard shapes. I'm not explaining that very well, I hope you know what I mean. Um, so you have like say a peacock and a, a drawn on cardboard, you know, beautifully printed in colour and things. And then they have numbers that correspond to little pieces of these foam type things. And these are all numbered too, so they get a sheet and they Say if this is number one, they take this and put it on the number one that's on the peacock and decorate it with these foam shapes. So I was given a bunch of these that were left over from a child's project and I took out what was remaining in here. And then because these are broken in between each little oval, I just adhered it to a toilet roll so that it wouldn't all move apart as I was trying to use it. And because these are adhesive, I just peeled off the backing and stuck it on. So I thought that could make some interesting patterns. Oh, it's very slidey in the paint. Eee. 
So one thing about this, you can't really be too um, worried about getting it perfect. It's all just having fun. So I'm doing some different ways. Some are a bit skew -if. I like that word skew -if, as they sl it slides on the paint. I may have too much paint and that may be the problem. It's tending to slide around a bit. Yeah, picking up the paint, I might just print off some of that. And that makes a really cool print too, see, as I stamp off the, the pattern. That's really cool, I like that. Right, I think that'll do. So now I'll find a page to put on my. I might use a blank page actually, because there's a lot of paint in between, so it'll cover anything I put it over top of, I think. So I'll grab a new sheet, a nice clean sheet, and let's see what we get. Ready for the reveal in three, two, one. Here we go. Whoops, here we go. Okay, that's okay. You can see some patches of that. So it's not as good as I was hoping for, but it's okay. And I can do more with that. I'm loving what's left here, so I'm going to keep layering and, and get some of that off. So I will just let that dry a little bit. Think about what colours I will put on. I'm going to go for a fluoro green. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Fluoro green. I have used this in my other videos. Lovely bright colour. Okay, and with it. With it, what do I want to put with it? Let's try some deeper green. So I'm going now to um, one of my pots of house paint. So these are just wee test pots of um, paint. The brand's resine. It's I don't know where in the world they have resine, but they have it here in New Zealand. And it's a paint that's this, these test pots are both interior and exterior rated paints. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not for doing this type of thing. But it's certainly really good when I'm doing my other art projects. Right. Time to get the brayer in. I really like partnering the, the bright green with the deeper green. It just adds some lovely dimension to it. And I'm interested to see what I pick up off of that last print because it I could see some of the pattern that was left on the plate from my little homemade stampy thing. So I'm really interested to see. Right, I'm just gonna roll off on one of these book pages, I think. Right, okay, next, what shall I do? Okay, this is, um, I made this little, can you see that? It's like a comb, but it's made out of cardboard. I had this box at home that we were throwing out from um, a new bowl set. And I, I liked the cardboard that held everything inside the box. It's quite Thin but quite sturdy and I was sitting there playing with it uh, last night or the night before thinking what can I make out of this so I just cut this rough little comb shape and I thought that could be interesting so I'll make sure I didn't cut off the little things because I thought I'd bend my comby bit too much so I just bent them out of the way so when I drag it through the paint I'm just going to make sure those are on top so they don't actually get caught in the paint themselves I'm just going to draw quickly. Oh, yes, I think this is going to be really good. I don't know if you can see that properly. I am loving it. Awesome. 
this could be one of my favorite tools so I'm just trying to match the Ziggy's eggs wiping the paint off and then I've just got a little bit here see if I can grab whoops not very well but a little bit just to get that edge right I think I might do this over top of another print I think this is going to look really good so I'm just going to go over top of this one because that one's kind of a bit, a little bit boring Oops. sometimes I well quite often I miss the top edge of the plate when I'm laying my paper down and I can see I've got this one crooked which I don't often actually do it crooked but I don't really mind it's all about the texture and not about perfection right here we go oh I'm loving, loving that oh my gosh that is super cool oh I just that's so awesome I can't even put it into words I love it even better than that last that first one I did beautiful that is so yummy and I think I will leave that one as is that's so super cool and look at this yummy texture left on the plate that's going to make for a really interesting next print as well so next print, what colours am I going to do? Oh, choices, choices, choices. Right, so I'm going to use some, this one's called Skin Tone Base, so it's a real sort of peachy, um, peachy pink colour, skin colour. Right, some of that, and this works really nicely with yellow, um, but I might just brighten it up a little bit. Mm. Now I don't know what colour I want. Orange. Let's go orange. They tone it really well. The peak, that skin colour and this orange. Quite a vivid, vivid orange. And it's quite thick too. Uh, when the same lady gave me this paint and when she it into the jar she didn't mix it first so i think it's could have done with a little bit of a mix i think but that's all right i think it's probably thick because it didn't get all the stuff mixed into it that, that paint comes with right prayer time Sorry, my nose is deciding to drip. Not a great time for it to decide to drip. I think it's because the heat pump's gone off and it's still just a little bit cool. It's spring, but we've had rain for the last couple of days, or well, three days, I think. And it's just sun shining beautifully today, but it's still a little on the cool side. And when the heat pump goes off, it cools down quite quickly. And I'm not in the room with the heat pump, it's in the next room, so it doesn't measure the temperature where I am, which is not very convenient. Okay, next texture is this corrugated cardboard from the same bit of cardboard that I made my comb. And I just peeled one layer off to reveal the corrugation. Now it's very, very small corrugation, I hope you can see that. And I'm thinking I'll just sort of dab it like that oh yes I like that as well that's really cool so I'm not lining the lines up so it'll be they'll be where they are they won't meet each other I'll just print off that paint's wet oh that's cool too see how that's come up and that's just stamping off directly from the cardboard right I'm gonna put it on this page now I actually really like this ghost print I think it's quite pretty but I'm just gonna go for it I'm gonna see what happens 
and risk ruining my print that I actually really like. I like a lot of ghost prints. I think they have a unique soft look because I don't think they always need to be really vibrant. That ghost looks so pretty and delicate. Right, here we go. That's fun, isn't it? I don't like it as much as the other one. And you can see see some of the wavy lines and some of the straight lines. So it's still cool. Now I wonder what that would look like with the straight lines without the other patterns. But cool, cool, cool. So honestly guys, I'm just using stuff that I had and was looking at it, looking at it, turning it over, folding it, doing different things and thinking how can I make this into something interesting. So I encourage you, do it. Just, if you find something that you're about to throw out, just look at it and think how can I turn it into something that will create an interesting texture. Even if you don't have a jelly plate, you know, you can stamp with it like I've been stamping off these patterns on the pages. Um, you can do the same thing even if you don't have a jelly plate. Right. I've got a different brand of house paint here and I do need to just give it a bit of a mix. I should have actually shaken it before I opened it because that's the easiest way. But I'll just give it a quick stir with my fork. This is my fork which I use as a can opener. An opener in my craft room and I also use it for making bows out of ribbons. So very handy implement as a fork. Right, so we'll put some here's my here it is. My palette. Palette knife. Yeah, my fingers are already getting really pinky. I must be having fun. Is that a sign of fun, is it? How much mess you make, how much paint or glue or whatever you're working with, how much you actually end up with on you. I've ended up with quite a bit of glue on my sleeve over the past week. I've been, uh, not glue, sorry, paint. Um, what was I doing that I've got paint on my sleeve? I can't even remember. I wasn't jelly printing, I was doing something else. And I keep dipping my sleeve in it. I might actually just pull my sleeves up. Excuse me. Um, so I try not to add to that issue. Right. Some of these lids are quite difficult to get off at times. Right, and this is an old paint I picked up at a... Oops, it's got some goopy bits in it. I don't want goopy bits on my plate. Picked up at a, um, like a second hand sort of place. So there's not a lot of paint in it. But I'll enjoy what I've got and I want to use it fairly quickly because I don't think it's got a lot of shelf life left in it. These paints and these pots, um, plastic pots, tend to go dry quite quickly. And particularly this one because the lid won't go on properly. I try so many times and it just won't seal properly. So that adds to the issue. I need a new baby wipe. Right, let's go back in with the brayer. Oh, sorry guys, I'm sniffing here because I haven't got a tissue with me. And I don't really want to leave the camera running while I go and run a, grab a tissue and then have you hear me blow my nose. Fortunately, it's not a bad drip. If it gets any worse, though, I might have to just say chat amongst yourselves while I dash off. Right, so I change my roll off page here. I don't know if you can see my roll off page in the frame. Right, okay, some more textures. Uh, I the shop I'm in there's a flat above me and the tenants 
did a bit of a runner and just disappeared um, a few weeks back now. Um, didn't tell the owner, you know, that sort of thing, as did a runner means. And they left behind a lot of stuff which um, friends of the owner has been clearing out. And today they were doing the garage, which is right next door to me. So I went and said, hey, since you're dumping everything, do you mind if I just have a wee look if there's anything I can use for my art and craft? So I got a whole lot of children's books out of the garage. And there was one of those puzzles, the foam puzzle sets that, you know, the giant ones that children have on the floor. And they can be shapes or whatever it is. Um, this one was an alphabet one, so I took a K out of the bag. Uh, it took me a while to find one that didn't have children's teeth marks all through it. And I had a bit of a play uh, this, aft yep, this afternoon um, and cut it into pieces. So this used to be a K. Okay, it doesn't look like a K now, but I really like the pattern on it. And I really wish I had to grab the whole bag, teeth marks and all, because these would be great to turn into stamps. They would be awesome. So my, my tip is, if you have any child's puzzles that you don't need of these foamy types, or you find some in a second-hand shop, or someone's giving it away or whatever, grab it and make your own stamps out of it. And you can use the texture as it is too. So I took, this is the, the upright of the K, so the K came off here. So I just cut off the bits where it joined in. And I thought, we'll see... And while I've been talking, I hope my paint doesn't dry too much. And I think I'll just stamp it off in between each. Just work along the plate. I'll show you my stamping off page when I've gone right across, because it's already looking quite cool. So it's a wee bit more labour intensive than um, something that just covers the whole plate. But I don't have anything that covers the whole plate, except perhaps bubble wrap. Um, you know, I don't have any large stencils that would cover the whole thing. So just doing it in stages is okay. You know, just a little bit more work. But when you're having fun, is it really work? See, isn't that cool? Right, stamp that one off. So there's my stamped off sheet, which I might leave it at that because that looks pretty cool. So it was over top of a book page that I had already printed on. And just with those red bits, I think that looks cool. All right, I might do a blank print, a blank bit of paper, sorry on then at the top of that just so I can get a good idea of the pattern it makes sometimes when you print over top of something else you don't actually appreciate the full pattern especially when it's new and you, you don't know what it does to begin with so I thought this would be the best way of seeing whether it's a cool print a cool pattern or not what do you think Who's guessing it will be and who's guessing it's not? Let me know in the comments. Oh look at it, it's pulling up all that paint that was, or some of the paint that was on the... Ooh. It's, it's not like I thought it would be. I have to say, like you can see some of the waffle sort of pattern in places. But I love the look. I love what it has pr printed as. It's... I don't know if you can see it in camera, it's quite subtle in some respects, but it's given it a real texture and an all over texture. Not at all what I was expecting that it would look like. Um, that's these little places here, I thought I'd get it more like that. But it's pretty cool. What do you think? I think it's cool. I hope you're enjoying my playtime as much as I am. <laughs> right, let's do some pink. Some B 
pink. Sorry guys, I just like repeating some words sometimes, just, I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of my quirky little things, I think. Like the sound of my own voice or something, which I don't really. <laughs> right. I think there's better things to listen to than my sound of my own voice. Oh, I'm going to have to clean the table because my baby wipes leaving paint on the table. Right, pink and I might go for this colour. This is called Gold Oxide. It's a sort of a goldy brown. It's quite a nice colour actually. But there's not a lot left in the tube. So I've got to the point, some of these, whoops, that's a paint heber. Some of these paints are so old that if I can use them up, then I can buy new ones. That's how it goes, isn't it? You know? And I've got to take that approach with everything in my craft supplies because I love things so much. I love the colours and the textures and you know all those supplies and everything. I love them so much that I don't want to use them up because then I don't have them anymore. But it's like, you know, if, if you use them, then you can go out and buy more if you have the money and I think that's part of my problem is <laughs> I'm often cash strapped so it's like if I run out then I can't go and replace them but the more I make the more I'm likely to sell so just get over it and use so I'm trying to practice that oh that makes a really interesting colour on the roll off right so the same K, I looked at the bits that were left and thought, what else can I do with it? So I made this wee arrow. Now it's it's not perfect. I didn't draw it out first. I just cut it and it's different sizes um, on each side. It's not symmetrical. And I kept going. I kept cutting a bit off and then I cut another bit off and cut another bit off. And it's like, very soon I'm not going to have an arrow at all. So I thought, I'd just stop and we'd just work with it as it is. Just gonna stamp it round. In different places. And I do this on a clean page as well so I can see whether the arrows act whether you can actually even tell that it's an arrow. Because <laughs> might not. Might be a complete failure. Apart from some pretty colour paint on a page. I mean, that can never be a failure, right? That's just, no, can't have a failure in that. Right, do some off the page. Right, before it dries too much, grab another bit of paper. And do a print and I'm still picking up some of those earlier layers of paint too which is cool because I love that addition of those colors into it just gives it a little bit more interest a bit more dimension more detail more fun right here we go okay can see some arrows. Um, another one down here. You can kind of see the arrows, and most of them not. Most of them just the texture, and that's okay too. I don't mind if you get some arrows and some just texture. I don't see a problem in that. Right, I'm gonna go back in with some yellow now. Loving all this colour. So I might just do yellow and see if we can pick up pick up some of those yummy colours off the plate on the next print. More than what I have. Oh, 
<sighs> so much fun just rolling paint. <laughs> you can tell I'm new to it, can't you? It's just like something therapeutic about it. Just rolling paint out, spreading it out, looking at the patterns as you roll and just appreciating the different things that are happening. Right, I like that. Just looking for a page to roll off onto. This one, this one. Of, sorry, I just need to change my stuff around. Ending up with a bit of a muddle. Right. Right, I might just use some bubble wrap for this one. This is a bigger piece than what I've used before. I have actually got bubble wrap that will cover the whole plate, but I need it for the shop to wrap things in that people buy. So I tend to use just little pieces. And I thought today I'd grab out this bigger piece and it might make it a little bit easier. Right. And, but it would be easier to have one that covers the whole plate. So you could just lay it down, lift it off and do your brunt and voila, it's done. Whoops, I overlapped that a bit, never mind. Right, and I really like stamping with this once I've put it in the paint. So hopefully you can see on the side here. So just do that. Keep some of that paint off. Very cool. Very cool. I like this. This is art that just keeps on giving. <laughs> you know, you can print off, brayer off your brayer, you can print off what you use to make your patterns. Like so many ways you can use what you would consider waste. Um, it's, it's all usable, it's all patterned and pretty and interesting. Sorry, I didn't show you that one, but that was one I'd pre-printed, and it was fluoro green and another colour. I can't remember what colour, but it was a bit boring. So you can see the texture of the bubble wrap. I might do something else on that page as well some other time. Right, here's some. Actually, I might use some of this um, bluey green colour. I think I'm thinking that. This one in the jar that was mixed wrong might have supposed to be this one because they're very, very similar. Oops, that's probably a little bit much paint. Think about what I'm doing. So I think I'm going to put some of that and then some of that paint from from this jar and see what they do together. Yeah, see this is a lot runnier. And it's the same type of paint as what's in the plastic bottle. So maybe they put too much of whatever they used to mix it. Maybe that was the problem. But it's actually a really good consistency for doing this with. got a ladies afternoon tea here this afternoon at three o'clock so I've got to make sure I'm done in time so I can clean up get everything set up get all this stuff put away because I need this table to put teas and coffees on and I don't know how many people are coming it's for my local church um, that I go to last two times it's been here and first time was really really nice it was uh, only five of us. We had good chat. It was lovely. Um, 
and then the last one I had to actually cancel because the lady who was bringing the afternoon tea couldn't make it after all and I was in a lot of pain that day so we just did a late ring round and cancelled it so it'll be interesting to see how many people come today right now I'm eager to see what this does I after I'd cut out various shapes from the letter K I had just scraps left so I thought how can I use the scraps so from the whole K literally only shavings went into the rubbish most of it I got something out of now I only glued this like half an hour ago so hopefully it's fine and this is another bit of the same cardboard that I've used for everything else stamping and then stamping off onto a book page and it's just a really random uh, selection of squares and rectangles well they're not even squares really they're just smaller rectangles so just cut what I had into pieces right now I'll turn it around so it doesn't do the same pattern I really like the stamping marks I'm making on the book pages. Works really well as a stamp, this stuff. So I highly recommend if you've got one of these floating around that um, the kids finish playing with or is looking a bit scrappy, no longer wanted, make stamps with it because it stamps super well. And that's cool. I mean, look at that stamp. So this is another book page that I've done previously. Isn't that stamping really well? Sorry, I know my arm's in front of the camera there. I keep forgetting. But I'm having so much fun. a bit right now I might use this bit actually this is a page that I used to brayer off on before some music paper and a foreign language too right I'm going to I was given this paper from a girl who used to play the violin doesn't have time anymore and she didn't want her music so she gave it all to me so it's got various marks on it where she's made notes and stuff as she played oops got a few bubbles in there never mind it's all good right okay well I'm not unhappy with it we've got some really clear ones I think some of them again I was sliding a little bit, maybe a bit too much paint on the plate. But I like the effect, just adds texture. And I think that's the key, you don't even really need a recognisable pattern. Just adding that texture is fine. I might do something again to that one though, I'm not sure. Right, I have no idea what the time is, so maybe one more and then I better call it quits because um, I don't want to still be doing this when the ladies start arriving because that would really not be a good thing okay I've got a few more shapes here and I'll just show you these are all over the K so this was one one of the angled parts of the K so I just rounded the corner to try and match that other end it's rough enough so I've got that one this was the end of the other bit of the K and I've just left it like that. I'm not sure whether I'll do anything else to that or just leave it as is. And then so this was cut from that and I just made a rough, it's not straight, it's squarish, diamondish, something like that. So just some ideas of how you can 
turn something into lots of different tools. Okay, now I've got this other bit of cardboard. Originally I had the other, it folded in half and that was this shape. And I cut that other bit off to make my little stamp here. And I'm trying to think, what can I do with this now that I've done that? I, mm, let's just have a wee play on one last one and see uh, what colour. So hard to choose colours. <laughs> right, we'll go back to this blush. Last time we did it with yellow, I think. This time, I think we'll do it with pink. With this lovely, beautiful, luscious looking pink. Or did I do it with orange? I can't remember. <laughs> I honestly can't. Yeah, I think I did it with orange, didn't I? I said it looks really good with yellow, and it does. Because I've done it with yellow before. But I like to try new things. You know, I can't do the same thing all the time. I like to, to mix it up and see what the results are. And see how goopy that blush pink is because it's old. But it's okay. Use it before it gets any worse, eh? And there's quite a lot in that tube still. Before I just end up not being able to use it because it's too too yucky. Right, use my roll for this. A new new page. Eee. So this bit of cardboard I'm thinking so I've got this little lip here I'm thinking just doing some random marks go every which way crossing over fun actually randomly putting marks it's quite, quite fun sorry guys I know I'm, I've gone quiet I'm just really enjoying this whoops a wee bit slidey mind which would do some off the page because it always looks really interesting like it hasn't finished it keeps going okay when should i stop when is enough enough <laughs> when i decide that i can't wait any longer to see what it does on the pattern on the page now take a print. See, but isn't that fun? <laughs> so I've got my little homemade stamp there and then I've got the cardboard marks over top and then there's some stencil patterns in the background. It's, it's about building texture, isn't it? Building those layers. Okay, I've got a book page here. And, oops, I've got one stuck to another one here. Oh dear. Can I get it up? There we go. Lost a little bit of page. Okay, so I might do two side by side of these book pages. So printing over top. Oops, just ran my finger through the wet paint. Not a bright idea. Okay. 
this is the one I used to do the cardboard on. I did it on the wrong side. Never mind. It'll be double sided for the back paper. Right. This one. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's fun. So simple. Really, really simple. Just a bit of cardboard with a wee lip on it. And that one. So on top of the stamped squares. That's so pretty. No really distinct pattern. It's just all over goodness. Right, and I'll do a ghost print from this one. Will I do it over top of another one? So I'll add it to this one that we did with, this is the bubble wrap, and I did the bubble wrap on. Just see if we can pick up any of this paint that's still on the plate. A little bit, lots still left there. Just picked up some little splodges, and that's cool. That adds... Actually, to mount to my eye, it adds quite a lot to that print that I was starting to think was a little bit blah. I thought the bubble wrap would be better, but I think the green, there wasn't too much um, contrast between that and the fluoro green. But that pink just adds a little bit something else. Let's see if we can pick up some more of this. I need to wet it a little bit, I think. But I haven't got a spray bottle with me. Right. Well, I think, guys, that I'll call it quits there. Um, I'll give you a wee show through. So there's that one we just did. There's this one that's still wet. That was my homemade stamp of squares and rectangles. Uh, this one with the arrows from the foam stuff. Whatever you call it. I don't know what it is. Maybe I should just call it foam instead of foam stuff. This one with my little roller stamp from the waste material. So that's kind of cool. And then, sorry, the rest of these are on the floor, so I've got to bend over to pick them up. That one, which I am really liking actually, especially some of the splodges of red. This is the first one I did with the brayer with the string on it, and I really love it, but I think I'm going to have to do it on a toilet roll instead because that brayer just locks up and then it slides and doesn't look as great. And there's that one with the, what was that one with? Ah, that was just stamping off my, stamping off from this. That's what that one, and I really like that. That's cool. There's this one, which I love. I think it's so super cool. And that was the comb, homemade comb out of cardboard. And then there was this one, which is the corrugated cardboard with some of the, the lines from previous print of doing the cardboard comb. So it's got straight lines and it's got wiggly lines on it. There's these two that I just did, which are still wet. Uh, that one that I made some marks on, that one was a blank page that I just stamped off on. And there's some really cool textures happening already. And I think that was it for today. So, I hope you enjoyed watching that and I hope that even if you didn't learn something, that you're encouraged to have a play. And if you don't have a jelly plate, to just grab some paint, put it on a plastic lid or something, and make some cheap stamps from waste materials. If you can do something with it and not have to chuck it out, I think it's brilliant. So that's all from me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.